Hi guys, I'm James McIntosh and today I'm joined with Football Operations Manager Mark Summerhill for a catch-up on all things Borough related. Mark, you're currently at training and it's a bit of a weird one today, isn't it? Rather than filming on a Tuesday, we're doing it on a Thursday today. It's because of the Easter holidays, but I think it's only right we start off with. How was your Easter holidays, mate? Yeah, um, yeah the Easter holidays were a little bit different this year with obviously games Friday and, uh, and Monday. And, you know, we, we trained Thursday, we obviously played Friday, um, managed to get Saturday and Sunday off from actually being out of the house, but still a lot of work to do building up to, to Monday's game. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it was a nice holiday. It didn't start very well on the Friday, but um, it certainly finished well on, uh, on, on Bank Holiday Monday. So that uh, made a very nice end, end to the sort of Easter period. Well, I have to admit, I'm looking forward to speaking about that Winchester game a bit later in the episode. And I think it'd be a good bit to talk about. But before we get on to that, I think it's only right we have a look at March as a whole. So we played six games in March, three wins and three losses. But Mark, what was your interpretations of this month? Would you count it as successful? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, when you look back at the games, obviously Winchester Winchester game was obviously the 1st of April, but... um, you know, the Basingstoke game was obviously incredibly dis- disappointing. Um, you know, there's no two ways about that. We can't dress it up. I think we feel that, um, you yeah, know, we sort of let everyone down, really. But, you know, but going into that game, you know, the, the Didcot win, you know, the, the Harrow win, the Hayes win, those three wins on, on the bounce were, you know, were, were particularly good. Um, and that was a particularly good period for us. And, you know, we, we were quite buoyant going into the Basingstoke game, maybe a little bit too much. Um, but I think, you know, obviously there was there was the pull defeat thrown in. But I mean, you know, other than that, I think it was a, a pretty positive month. I think any month where you can sort of string three wins together in a, in a row, then maybe pick up a defeat, which is obviously disappointing, and then finish, well, obviously start April with, with a win. Um, yeah, I think overall you have to look at the positive that the month. And, and there was a, you know, there were some good W's in there. Well, I remember speaking to you last month, but looking at this month, well, March's month, we did lose our first two games. And then, like Mm. you mentioned there, we went on the streak where we won three consecutive games. But it's a bit weird how we lost these first two games in the month. Do you just put this down to the pure amount of games we had in the opening couple of weeks in that month? Because we had the likes of the Pompey Senior Cup games. We had the Russell Coates Cup games. And for you, is this one of the main reasons why we seem to struggle at the start of the months? I think, well, there's been a lot of games for sure, you know, but we can't get away from that. But, you know, the lads are usually in sort of uh, training Tuesdays and Thursdays anyway. We're used to a busy week. We're used to a busy schedule. I guess sometimes it just shows how tough this league is. You know, Paul were on the back of a a bad run and yet, you know, they change managers before they come here. It's a local derby. It's it's an away game under the lights midweek. You know, the midweek games are, you know, are are tough. There's, There's no, I keep using the word tough, but... I always think the midweek games in this league are tough when everyone's been at work for the day. Um, you know, we, we prepare properly before the, the sessions before, but you still, it's not a Saturday, um, the, the Tuesday. And if you plan away on, on a Tuesday, you know, that's, that, that's sort of double tough, you know, a long trip midweek after a day at work as well. But, you know, we can't make excuses. It is, it's the same for all, for all the clubs. But, you know, so I've said, like I said last month, I said, are we going to win every game? Probably not. Um, you know, will we win a majority? Hopefully. And we're, we're now in April, you know, the business end, five games to go. And uh, yeah, we're second in the league. So, you know, I guess we're in as good a... When you, I, I guess when you take that as an end result of what March brought for us, being second in the league, five games to go, looking pretty good for a playoff spot, not wanting to tempt fate. But more importantly than that, you know, our, our big aim now is to finish second. Let's, let's be really honest. You know, we, we Chesham have won the league and, you know, rightly so from the way they perform. But I think now... All efforts from everyone at the club are to, fo- are to focus on a, on a second place finish to try and achieve that home semi final, and if we're lucky enough, you know, a home final. Well, we'll get on to that bit a bit later about our aspirations, and you have massively brushed upon it there. But I just want to take it back to those um, three consecutive wins yet again. It looked such a bright time for Borough, and coming off of the back of those two losses, it might just have been so good to see the wins back again. And really, realistically. In the first two games, we didn't really look too good. So there was a couple of times where we were leading and then we let in a goal. And then after those goals, we seemed to let in a couple and we didn't look too good after conceding. And I'm not sure if this is something Pat, Joe and you have all like noticed within the teams. But we seem to look a lot better now going ahead. So rather than sitting and defending the lead, we seem to go for that third or second goal even. And we just look a lot better when we are leading now. Well, from that adversity and uh, we went to Hayes. 
I'm pro- feeling a lot of pressure. That's you know that, that's not in the world. That's the sort of that's, that's the business we're in. And we produced a really really good performance. You know, scored early, scored you know scored good scored good time, scored early to settle the nerves, scored you know two good goals in in the second half, and that was a really really convincing away performance to win three nil in you know, you know to win three nil away from home, especially someone like Hayes where they're fighting for their life. That's that's a fantastic result. And then to follow it up, yeah, you know, with a gritty one nil win over Harrow. To then go to Didcot and yeah, and produce another four nil nil away win. That's always going to always going to give you confidence. And I guess that's what heaped on the disappointment about the Basin State performance. You you can have a bad performance. You'll get that over a forty two game league season. We're probably going to play near fifty games this season. The cup games. You're going to have an off, you're going to have an off day and an off night. No one likes it when it happens. But I think the fact we're on the back of such a good run for those three games is why we were absolutely mortified with the result on, on you know, on Friday at, at Basingstoke. And not just the result, probably the, the manner, really. I think everyone could see the way we conceded the goals is, is not very gospel like But yet again, time of adversity, we've, we've come through that with a really big, a big win on, on the Monday. Well, to be fair, Mark, I think you really summed up my next question pretty well there. Because like you said, these three wins, they were so impressive. And then when we did go away to Basingstoke, it was almost like we weren't even watching Gosport. Like the display we were watching, like I remember seeing it in the press box. I don't even remember seeing a shot on target really most of the game for Gosport. It was Basingstoke. They just seemed to, they seemed very strong in possession. And I think they took Gosport by surprise. And I think that's a fair way of putting it maybe in that aspect. But they were a team. They were informed. So before that week, they had got a nice 1-1 draw against Chesham. So they were definitely in form. But can you pinpoint why that game went so wrong? Well, I think if you look at Basel State's form, that they're one of the form teams. They've produced some ex- excellent results building up to that game. And I think the managers have done a really good job and sort of got them together at, probably at the right time. They're not competing for anything really this season, but they've certainly, um, you know, we certainly got them together um, for what they're already talking about will be some sort of challenge next season. And, and um, I've got no doubt yeah, there'll be a force. But, I mean, what went wrong? We were fairly comfortable at half-time. Um, you know, we you know, we, we were obviously right in the game. You're always you're always in the game at half-time, you know, when, when the score was as, as it was. Um, probably shaded possession, if we're honest. But, yeah, without really creating sort of clear-cut chances that you think, yeah, we're absolutely going to score here. So I think we thought we probably thought you know going into the second half that we we would probably nick one. Um, we if if the game followed the same pattern or the you know the same sort of trend, we'd probably end up nick, nicking one and coming away you know with, with a one 0 win. And yet, who can explain that you know the moments in football, the way we conceded the goals like we did, you know three um, you know, individual errors, really really sloppy soft goals. You know the one that's gone to the far post then come. Yeah, we've given the ball away. It's come to the far post, been volleyed back across uncontested, then headed in uncontested. Yeah, you know, the third one, a, a blind pass. But the goals were the goals were awful. And I think you can, you know, if that was repeated, then we'd have to do some serious work on that. Um, but I think there's times in football for analysis. We've just done analysis now um, before the lads have gone out into training. Um, I don't. Sometimes you've just got to you know, dust yourself down and accept it was one of those days where people made mistakes they won't normally make. The team was flat. That's probably been, um, you know, when you look at our performances during the season, we've probably had Harrow away, Paul away, and now Basingstoke away, where we've let ourselves down. If we're being really honest, but I think, like I've said, over a 42-game league season, probably a 50-game season, to, for that to happen three times, I think sometimes you just got to dust yourself off not dwell on it, and then just look to recover. And thankfully, the lads have shown great character. Um, Pat and Joe have shown great character as leaders of the group and have not deviated from what they do well, which is putting sessions on, which is correcting things, which is coaching really, really well. And, you know, they don't shy away from difficult conversations. They don't shy away from, I've, I've mentioned this before, how um, people probably see they're very, very positive characters, but, you know, you would not want them to be in the dressing room after the Basingstoke game because, you know, the, the players were told, and I think they have to accept sometimes that, you know, you will need to be told, and, you know, that certainly was done. Um, so as much as we dust ourselves down, we don't ignore it, but you can't dwell on it. There's, there's fine balances, fine margins in football, and I think that's what Pat and Joe do really, really well with this group. 
Well, the management team, they must have definitely said the right thing. Because comparing that team to the one that played against Winchester so last Saturday, we looked like, like I said, two different completely teams. So I remember that Winchester game. And for me, looking back at it, I can only really remember two chances Winchester had. So they had that goal, which did end up in a goal, obviously. And you had that other Tommy Wright chance where he hit the post. But the first goal, if I'm being honest, it's one of those goals where you can't really defend it. If It was a lovely goal from the striker and it is just one of those hard ones to defend. But after we did leak in that goal, we just went on full attacking force. So you guys, you made the right substitutions and they really paid off in the end. And I'm guessing after the game, you must have been congratulating the boys and thinking it's a totally different performance and you just must have been so pleased with the boys. I think that we talk about it a lot and people in football talk about this word a lot, but talk about character. And when you're off the back of a Basingstoke defeat, when you can probably be a little bit down for yourselves, to then come and outplay Winchester like I thought we did, to then, to then go one nil down to an absolute worldie of a strike from Tommy Wright, who's absolutely curled that in the top corner, leaving Toby no chance. You know, you're starting to think to yourself, you know, we're up against it here. But, you know, the lads showed real intensity, real desire, and really got on the front foot and we continued to, you know, to do to do the patterns, to do the right thing. You know, we got good overlaps, we got good movement, we were strong down both sides, you know, we worked the ball across both sides, yeah. You know, we switched we switched play really well and we created some really, really good chances and yeah, you know, and got two, you know, two two good goals and, and we probably could have had more, you know. I think that last probably was it twenty minutes, half an hour, we absolutely dominated that mm. game of football. Dominated it. Had the game gone on for a little bit longer, we, we would have we, we would have scored more for sure. So yeah, I think a real, real test if anyone's sort of looking at Gosport Borough and thinking you know, what what's the character like? I think that moment for me probably really epitomised our character and hopefully, you know, our character now it'll take us into the last five games and potentially two playoff games. Well, speaking on that Winchester game still, there was a lot of positives in that game. And for me, one of the biggest positives was Christian Campbell. Ever since joining, he just looks like such a star man in this team. So if I'm being honest, he looks like National League South worthy. He looks incredible for this league. And I just want to get your thoughts on the winger. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Chris has been a great addition. Um, when Chris became available, it was very, very clear Pat and Joe want, wanted to get him in. And, um, you know, we sort of... Uh, moved swiftly and you know, decisively to, to get Chris in when he became available. They, they played with him. Um, they spoke really, really highly. I, I was in no doubt from, uh, from what they'd said and a little bit of research. He was absolutely the key man to bring in. So, so we got him in. And, um, you know, Chris didn't take long to settle. He was literally his first game off and running. His levels have been really, really good since he's been here. You know, you talk about being a National South, National League player. You know, he's come from those levels and you know, been those levels this season. So it's it's no surprise he um, he he shows those sort of signs of, of ability that, that he does show. You know, he's his, the way he can beat people is probably as good if if not better than anyone else in this league. The way he goes by people, his twists, his turns, he's exciting to watch. And he does it all with purpose as well. You know, he's a big, strong guy. You've only got to watch him in the air. Um, you know, he's he's a good all-round footballer and been an excellent addition to an, you know, an already decent squad. So we're really pleased with Chris. And, you know, no setting in at all, hit the ground running, which, you, you know, you couldn't ask for more at this time of the year than to sign a guy to come in and just hit the ground like that. But an absolute brilliant signing. Well, I was noticing when commentating on that game, Christian Campbell, Rafa Ramos and Alex Barca during that game. So it was the first time we've seen Alex in a while. But those two, they formed a really nice trio. So they were constantly passing it to each other. It was like Tiki Taka play. It was like watching Brazil, like the retro Brazil in the World Cup games. But those three, they're just forming such a nice trio. And is this one of the tactics you, like you guys have been trying to implement on the training ground recently? Well, I'm sure Pat will take the Brazilian comment um, quite nicely with, with, uh, <laughs> with, with his heritage. But, um, yeah, I mean, like I've said a million times before, I believe I use I used the word lightly. Pat and Joe are exceptional coaches. And the work we do on Tuesday and Thursday with the patterns are not patterns for patterns' sake. Um, you know, there's a lot of patterns. There's a lot of gameplay. There's a lot of watching the opposition. There's a lot of how, how we can exploit spaces and how we can exploit pockets and how we can work movements between players down one side. And um, it's no surprise to me when you when you see that back come through on a match day. In fact, it must be it's it's you know it's fantastic for me. It must be even more fantastic for those two that are, you know, are leading and, and doing the coaching. Um, 
but also you know the way the players respond to it um you know, I've said before that you know there's a different culture at this football club this year. That that's what Pat and Joe and and, and the sort of management group bring, and the players have really bought into it. And uh, yeah, the, the sessions we we probably train harder than anyone. We probably do more sessions than anyone when games are off. You know, we're in training when a lot of teams will have days off over bank holidays and Christmas period. We're in, we're in, and you know, there's just the planning that goes into the training sessions is probably longer than the, longer than the sessions. And again, that that is what you know. That's what the, these two managers managers offer. So absolutely no surprise to me to see see that spill out onto the pitch. Well, another one of the big positives from that Winchester game and a couple games before is Zach Sharp coming into the team. So obviously, we would have liked to see Joe Morrison carry on towards the end of the season, and it's a tragedy what happened to him involving breaking the collarbone. So it is unfortunate him having to go out for the next well couple of weeks. I'm not sure how long he's out for, but we, I'm guessing we won't see him back until the end of the season. But Zach, he's come in and he's looked so good in that defence. So there's been a couple of times where he's already been awarded Man of the Match, and I think that just highlights. That's how good he's been since coming in. It's not often the defenders get man of the match in this recognition. So he's been a really good player since coming in. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't want to, you would not want to be a centre back at Gosport Borough this year. You know, first we lose Charlie Wasman with a long term, uh, a long term injury, who's actually pr- likely to be back in the squad uh, Saturday at Hamwell. You know, we, we then lose Harry Medway at Christmas Boxing Day. Um, he's just had his operation. Just seen him actually. Really good to see him back on his feet. And uh, you know, then we lose Joe Morrison in, in a Russell Coates Cup game, or which cup it was, you know, on on a midweek game, and you just think, wow, that is really, really unlucky. But what it does do is it shows how deep the squad is, and you know, there's no one in this squad. We're not carrying any passengers. Everyone in in the squad has got a job to do, and everyone in the squad has, has you know is more than capable of doing that job. So when people are called on, and Zach's had you know plenty of opportunities this year you know you think back to like well NFA Cup games and other league games that Zach played in and you know one thing you do you do get with Zach um you know is and I'm not saying the other lads don't try but with, with Zach you will get someone that will absolutely die for this football club you know he's, he's a gospel boy um his family are here and you know when you've got Zach's passion and determination and ag- aggression um, combined with, with, with visibility, you've got someone that's never going to let you down. So um, it's great to see him get his opportunity. Um, great to see him play so well, and you know, great for everyone. You know, to have a have a local lad, you know, doing so well at the business end of the season is is uh, testament to Zach, and again, testament to our, to our two managers and, and the whole club. Well, it's good to see Zach in action. And Borough fans, you can see that interview I did with Zach, so make sure to watch that back. But also, on that Winchester game, there was one negative of the game. And I'm not sure if how much of a negative it is. But we did see Bradley Tarbuck. He went down towards the final minutes, and I didn't see him get up. So can you give us any news on Tarbuck? Yeah, I can give you some news on Tarbuck. Yeah, he's training tonight, which is uh, <laughs> which is really good. And, you know, he's in contention like everyone for the squad on Saturday. So that's really good. We're, we're not worried about Brad at all. Um, but, yeah, there was certainly a heart in the mouth moment, when, <laughs> a heart in the mouth moment when you see Brad go over on the final whistle and, and not get up. Um, that was really concerning because he has been a standout player this season. But, no, Zach, Zach's good. So, yeah, that would have been, I mean, if we'd lost Zach... Um, if we'd have lost Brad, sorry, with an injury towards the end of the game, that would have been a massive negative on what was a really, really good day for the club. Um, yeah, another good day for the club. Yes, that was potentially a negative, but, you know, a crowd of 1,100 to have ex-players here, you know, to win, to be a bank holiday, to have Portsmouth here presenting us with the award for um, hosting their 125th anniversary game. It was just a really, really special day. And... Uh, yeah, so thankfully, yeah, a long answer to a short question, but yeah, Tarp is okay. Well, I think that's put a lot of Gosport fans' rest to mind. So that's brilliant news, and I'm glad you cleared that up now. But well, going into the next five games, you mentioned in the, in the earlier in the interview how we do want to secure that second place spot and how crucial that could be. But we've got five games remaining, and looking back at the whole season as a whole we have like we've done very well but like I said every team in this league they just look so good so you can't really underestimate any team within this league so looking ahead at the next five games in my opinion I think we may have to win the next five in order to get that second place spot with Salisbury they don't look like stopping any point soon so is this a realistic ambition winning the next five games? Absolutely yeah I mean when you look at the next five games just look at my list you know Hamwell, Tiverton. 
you know, Hayes, um, you know, Chesham, you know, to finish with Chesham at home on the last day of the season, you know, thankfully, um, you know, Chesham have won it. But, um, yeah, we will absolutely be setting out to win those last five games. We've got no other choice. You know, finishing second is, is not just nice for the club. It's an absolute must to try and give ourselves the best chance of, well, A, finishing the playoffs, um, but B, making sure we try and get ourselves a home semi-final and, you know, and the chance of a home final. Yes, yes, there's benefits to the football club, but that you know, they're obvious, big crowd, big games. and uh, But I think you give yourself far better chance going into the playoffs with, with home ties, and I think that's absolutely critical that we um, aim to finish second. <coughs> well, to be fair, it's all in Gosport's hands. We are currently leading Salisbury with goal difference, so it'd be interesting to see how we cope. And in my opinion, I do think we can get second, and hopefully next time I speak to you, we'll be speaking to you about the playoffs and playing the, maybe the playoff semi-final and the final at home. So hopefully I'm looking forward to that one. But also, it wasn't just the league games we played in March. We also did play our cup games. So like I mentioned earlier in the interview, we played that Pompey Senior Cup semi-final. We played the Russell Coates semi-final. And it looks as though we are going to be getting to the finals of these competitions now. And I'm guessing this is the aim now, maybe to add some more silverware to the club. Yeah, when we when we came in at the start of the season, we, we were really, really clear. I mean, we have probably um, overachieved from one aspect, but we said, you know, we wanted a respectable league position. Bearing in mind this time last year, the club was still planning to stay up and actually only ended up finishing 17th. Um, for lots of reasons, you know, I don't need to go into them now. So we, yeah, we were comfortable if we'd have got an upper mid-table finish, and and we we did target two of local cup competitions, and we said, you know, we'd like to be in a final, and um, we'd, we'd we'd like to win something for the fans. So um, you know, we're sort of we're well on schedule for that. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Well, I think one of the big per- well, one of the big positives of getting to the final, especially with that Pompey Senior Cup game, it is getting to the Fratton Park. So it gives a lot of Gosport fans something to enjoy and something to look forward to at the end of the season. Yeah, I, think, that- I think it's really important that we that we try and reward the fans, you know, to have 1,100 mm-hmm. people here on uh, Monday and the, the away support at Basingstoke, which was probably turned out to be a pretty miserable day, but it was fantastic. We've been so well supported this year. Numbers have grown. And the most pleasing thing, yeah, you know, home crowds are really important. But yeah, the away following when you get tricky, tricky away games, you see the amount of Gosport fans and the amount of noise they make at our away games. I really do, you know, I say it every week in my programme notes, but I take my hat off to them. Their support has been absolutely phenomenal. And if we can give them a day out at a cup final, then we'd be really pleased to do that. Well, I think it would be great to see a wave of yellow waving their flags at the bowl well, in Fratton Park. It would be a cool sight to see, especially being the media man. You get some good videos, definitely. But on the note of silverware, we have had a lot of silverware involving our centre of excellence. And I just wanted to get your views on our under-18s. So they're playing at home this Sunday at a 12.30 kickoff. And can you give us any news <coughs> on that and just how happy you are with the centre of excellence? Yeah, I mean, let's let's not forget Zach, our, our first team, you know, centre back, which we've been talking about, is the manager of the under 18s. Um, to lead any team to an unbeaten season is phenomenal, and that's what Zach's done. Um, they've actually won the league, um, which is again a phenomenal. Yeah, if you win your league and then you go a season unbeaten in the league, that that's two incredible um, achievements. So Zach's done an amazing job there. But I think to have the opportunity to finish their league season at home. In what is a local derby against Fairham, um, you know this this coming Sunday lunchtime is a fantastic opportunity for our under 18s They're going to get the cup or the, the league, um, you know the league um, trophy for winning the league on Sunday, regardless of the result. But um, the opportunity for them to play in the local derby and then lift lift the league trophy after at home, you know, in in the stadium is is a fantastic opportunity for those lads. And don't forget. We've seen quite a few of those under-18s in our team and those two, um, you know, Portsmouth Senior Cup, Russell Coates Cup and the other cups we've played in. There's, you know, there's a lot of uh, potential in there that are being nurtured by Zach and well looked after by Zach. And, you know, when I pop out training in a minute, they'll have some other under-18s will be out there with our first team. It's something we've done all season, integrate the 18s in, in with the first team. So, again, you know, no surprise really that the 18s have done so well. That's taken nothing away from Zach and, and the job he's done. He's done a phenomenal job and I'm really, really pleased and uh, looking forward to Sunday lunchtime. It'll be a great, um, you know, a great spectacle for everyone to come and see what, what is the future. And it's free entry as well. I think it's 12.30 kickoff. So um, I'd like to encourage as many people as possible to come down and give Zach and the boys a really big cheer. What else are you going to do on a Sunday lunchtime when you've got free entry to come and watch Gosport play? 
So, um, yeah, I hope that'll be a fantastic day and well-deserved. And yeah, congratulations from myself and everyone else um, involved with the first team for those under-18s. That's a great achievement. Well, Gosport fans, make sure to come along to the game. Like Mark said, it should be a great game. And hopefully, we well, it's guaranteed now we're going to lift the trophy. But hopefully we can get that invincible status. So make sure you come along. But Mark, just before the end of the interview, we are playing Hanwell this Saturday. And what can the Gosport fans expect from them? Well, when you look at Hanwell, you know, they're fighting for their lives at the moment. So, you know, that's never an easy an easy thing to do. Never an easy place to go and play someone that's fighting for their life. They've actually only lost three games in, in their last eight with some really good draws in there. <coughs> Excuse me again. Um, a good draw against Chesham, a really good win against Walton, another good win against Didcot, sort of thrown into that with losses only to sort of Swindon, Bracknell and Beaconsfield. So... That is going to be a tough, tough game Saturday. As I keep saying, I use the word tough a lot. Um, but it's going to be a tough trip to Hanwell on Saturday. There's no two ways about it. We're going to have to replicate Winchester performances at Hanwell Saturday to, you know, to go and win the game. But, you know, we are rest assured we're not going there for a point. We're going there to win the game. And that will be the way we approach our remaining five games. So um, I would say it will be, you know, entertaining. It will, it, it will be, you know, it will be nervous. It will be interesting. It will be all those all those good, you know, sort of describing words that we're at that stage of the season now where these games are just going to be, uh, you know, and Hammer are a big side too. We've just been watching some clips on them. So, um, you know, there'll be, a, it will be a physical contest. And, you know, if you're going to do something like finish second in the league or, you know, get in the playoff, you've got to go to these places and you've got to, and you've got to win the games and you've got to have different systems to win these games. And again, you know, keep saying it, Pat and Joe have got the guys well set for this one. So, um, I'm I'm really confident going into Saturday, Saturday's trip. Well, it's two big games to look forward to at Gosport Borough. And Mark, thanks for your time. And can we get the final words up the borough? Up the borough. Thanks, James. Thanks, Mark. Final words from me, up the borough.